Lavra Owen and Quirky Paul. Winnie goes for golf. Winnie's house party. Winnie woke in the deep dark middle of the night, clutching her tatty batty blankets and listening to the darkness, and wondered what had woken her. Silence. There should have been a sound of Wilbur snuffling and grunting. Wilbur? Winnie picked up her wand. Swish! Abracadabra! The end of the wand glowed like a torch, which scribbled light around the room. Winnie shuffled into her slip sloppers, pulled on her messing gown, and set off along the long dark landing. She felt terribly lonely, all on her only in that big house. Wilbur? Winnie opened door after door, but the only answer she got back from the empty rooms was her own echo. Where are you? said Winnie. Where are you? said the echo. I'm here, you fool, said Winnie. I'm here, you fool, said the echo. Crash! What was that? Winnie hurried downstairs to the kitchen and shone her wand torch. Wilbur, there you are. Neo, said Wilbur, licking his lips. Heck, Wilbur! You've cooked more than we could eat in a week, said Winnie, right? That's it. Meow. We're going to have a house party. Me he he, laughed Wilbur. Not a party for houses. That would be as silly as a snail taking up clog dancing. A party for people in our house. We've got empty rooms and too much food. And I'd like people to talk to instead of just cats and echoes. Row, scowled Wilbur. So Winnie raced around her house, magicking rooms ready for guests. Abracadabra! Cobweb curtains appeared. Abracadabra! There were suddenly toad plump cushions, vases of thistles, slug slime soaps and plastic packets, and more. Our guests will be as snug as a whole termite hill of bugs, said Winnie. Abracadabra! Winnie magicked herself a magnificent party dress. Now we just need to plan an itinerary. Meow. It's a list of what we'll do and when we'll do it, said Winnie. You'll have to write it down, Wilbur. Itinerary 8 o'clock a.m. guests arrive, show them to their rooms. 9.00 am breakfast, 10 o'clock a.m. play hide and seek in the garden. 1 o'clock p.m. picnic lunch. 2 o'clock p.m. games with bats, from the battery, and balls. 6 o'clock p.m. supper. 7 o'clock p.m. watch DVD which you pawn a star. 8 o'clock p.m. bedtime. There, said Winnie, pinning the itinerary to the fridge. Her witch watch said it was 8 o'clock already. Where is everyone? said Winnie. Oh, whoops. I've not invited them yet. Winnie tapped buttons on her telling moan to call her sisters Wilma and Wanda and Wendy, and her uncle Owen, her auntie Alice, and her cousin Cuthbert. She invited them all to her party, and they all texted back yes. They forgot to add please, which Winnie thought was rather rude. And they all asked if they could bring friends along with them, which Winnie thought was even ruder. But she said, oh, all right then. Bing bong. They all arrived. Meet Carol, said Uncle Owen. Allow me to introduce Zane, Stig, and Fong, said Cousin Cuthbert. This is Clemency, said Auntie Alice. I'm not sharing a room with her, mind. Luckily Winnie's house was big enough to have rooms for everyone, not that any of them were happy with what they got. I wanted a sea view, said Wilma. But we aren't anywhere near the sea, said Winnie. Humph, went Wilma. Can't we have bunk beds, said Cuthbert. This pillow is lumpy, said Carol. Oh, for Goosey Gander's big fat panda's sake, let's have breakfast, said Winnie. It got worse at breakfast. Cuthbert said, you know why they call it breakfast? Why? Because it's when you break things, fast, he said. 
and he picked up his sneerial bowl and threw it onto the floor smash. And soon rip. Crash. Splinter, Winnie's guests were having a smashing time, breaking her things. They were behaving very badly. Come into the garden, said Winnie. But they went on behaving badly in magical ways. Pow. Zip. Zap. Zlop. Zing. Croak. Magic was flying off wands all over the place. Winnie ducked. Air. She said, we must play hide and seek now. It's on the itinerary. Bagsy I'm it, said Wendy. Everybody hide while I count to a hundred. One tickle flee, two tickle flee, three. Winnie's guests hid here, there, and everywhere. Winnie dug her way into the smelly compost pile of old leaves and peelings and rottings. It was soft and warm and buzzing with flies. This is nice, said Winnie, settling into the quiet smelly warmth. But, as her witch watch ticked on, Winnie could hear chatting and laughing. They've found everyone except me. Clever me, she said. Then it went quiet. Hey, called Winnie. She climbed out of the compost and stomped inside, where her guests were causing havoc. Winnie was dripping with muck. Her guests looked at her and were about to laugh when Winnie put her hands on her hips. You are all so rude, she shouted. And everyone froze. I don't want you at my party any longer, said Winnie. Go home. Now. But the itinerary says food and films and... Began Aunt Alice. Winnie was wondering if they would all refuse to go, when... Thump, thump, thump. Winnie looked over her shoulder and saw Jerry coming through the garden. She turned back to her guests. If you don't all go home now, I'll get my big brother onto you. What big brother? asked her guests, especially her sisters. My big brother, Jerry. Look! Winnie pointed. There he is. Thump, thump. Can I borrow a cup of sugar, please, missus? said Jerry. He's big, isn't he? said Winnie. Winnie's guests gasped. They grabbed their bags and they tumbled out of the house and away. Thanks, Jerry, said Winnie. Will you stay for tea? It was nice sitting and chatting and scrunching and slurping and burping with just Jerry and scrunching.